All right, so what's up there, YouTube? Okay, so today I'm gonna to do something a little bit different. I haven't done anything like this before and I thought I would share with you my kayak setup and what I do, how I'm, what I'm doing to set this whole thing up. So when you go fishing, when I, when I go fishing, I have to go fishing fairly early in the morning and uh, it depends on the tides and what time the tide's coming in and tide going out. You really, the best time to fish is just before high tide and just after high tide. That seems to be the best to me. It might not be the absolute best, but it's the best for me. So <laughs> I've, I've had the best, the most luck during high tide uh, when I'm fishing. So here's the deal. In Florida, and I'm sure in most other states, if it's dark out, you cannot fish without a light on your kayak. You don't need the lights in the front that they have like the red and green, like a boat, like a, a regular boat needs a red and a green, red on one side, green on the other in the front. But you do need a light that sticks up a couple feet high with a, with a light on it so that people can see you. So what I did was, I picked up, I got everything out here, I picked up a post light that sticks out. You can put it out the front or out the back. I'm going to stick it back there. A post light, it's an LED. This one's 24 inches. I might uh, return this and get a 36 inch one. Get one a little bit taller, I think. But I don't want it to get in the way of my camera or my fishing rod or anything like that. So I think this might actually be just, an, I mean, that might be fine sitting up that high might be just fine back there for to see me it's a light it's 360 degree light so you need a light and i'll leave a link in the description below to all this stuff that you got where i got it on amazon so that's an led light you need a, a way to power it this is a power supply port that goes in the this is what you actually drill out and put in the you drill this hole you have to be comfortable with drilling holes in your kayak you drill the hole and then this goes in here like this. It pushes in and that's it. It's locked in. It's got a little lock to keep it from sliding out. And then it's locked in. You tilt it back or tilt it forward, whichever way you want to do. On the, You want it up front, out here, you can do that. But to me, that's going to be in the way. I'd rather have it back there, away from, my, away from where I'm fishing. Have it like all the way in the back somewhere. That seems like a better place to me for the light. The other cool thing is if you have a light like this, you can always mount like a GoPro to it. You know, you can mount a camera to it if you wanted to. You got a pose, just use one of those bicycle mounts, mount it to it and have a remote where you can turn the light on and off. So basically when it's, when it's dark, you take the light out. I mean, when it's light, you take the light, light out and you open the hatch and you can just shove it in there. You can put it, you can put it away. And then uh, when it gets, when it gets, dark you pull it out and you stick it in stick it back there in your kayak you can stop and and stick it in or you can just leave it in if you know you're going to be fishing late or whatever or if you're going out early or whatever anyway so you got to drill the hole for this looks like about a one inch hole and then you have to have a way a way to power it and a way to control it because you don't want to have to, you can leave power on it and just shove it in when it when it's in, it's on. But if you're fishing and it's it's you know six o'clock in the morning, five thirty in the morning, and it's you're fishing and it's it's dark out, and then it gets light at seven o'clock, and now you don't need it anymore. You don't need to be running your battery down by just leaving the light bent, and you don't want to have to climb back there, take the pole out, and go put it up. So what you need is a switch. So what I did was I bought this it's basically three switches i'm tripping over my stuff here it's basically three switches they switch like this three switches it's got a, a voltage uh meter on it and it's got usb ports on it so you can plug in your phone or whatever so you want this in a, in a location that you can that you can get to easily but you don't want it to be in your way. So the seats here, I'm thinking right here on the side. I'm thinking like right here. Like that's a perfect spot for it. Right there on the side, right under the handle. You know, you could put it up front here. That would definitely be out of the way and it'd be closer to the, to the battery and closer to the, 
to the hatch, that might be a better spot. Plus you can see the voltage. And then the reason why I'm saying it would be closer to the, it would be closer to the battery, but I have a uh, couple, uh, one inch coupling thing here for a piece of pipe. I put my camera on a piece of pipe here. So you could technically, you could take a USB cord out of here, run it up and plug in your camera and get all day power on your camera. So you don't have to worry about running your, your cameras off of the power. And you could also, the other thing is you could also just put another one of these USB, USB port things back here, like somewhere beside the seat. So you'd have another one for, the, for another camera back there even. And you have another one to plug in another camera for all day power. Because the batteries in the, in the little GoPro cameras, they don't last. The little action cameras, the batteries don't last. So this is another really good spot right here in the middle. And you can, and plus the other thing is, is you can get to the wiring really. Of course, when you drill, the, when you cut the hole, you could get to the wiring pretty easy. But this is going to be under my leg, so I might be turning it off. And if there's something plugged in it, it might be in the way up under my leg. Or my tackle box is usually here. I have it sitting here. Stuff could come over and hit the switch and turn it off. It might become more of a hassle to have it here. I think this might actually be the best spot for it because I never put anything, I never put anything right there. So I think that's probably the best spot for it. And it even comes with little stickers that go on here that, you know, for whatever you're using, like the turn on, uh, the light in the back, you know, LED lights, uh, auxiliary power for, uh, you know, a fish, uh, trolling motor or, you know, whatever. You could have a, you could have a little fish uh, um, aerator for live bait, you know, have a little tank back there for live bait. So the things, the tools that you'll need to put to install these, these items, and here's the battery. It's, it's a big battery. Here's the thing. I, I think I, I went a little bit bigger than I should have. I got a big 12 volt, 18 hour, 20, 18 amp hour, 20 hour battery, non-spillable sealed lead acid battery, right? And this thing's kind of heavy. I should have probably got the smaller one because <laughs> now I have to get a big waterproof, and it doesn't have to be waterproof, waterproof, but waterproof is good because you're in salt water. But water resistance is, is better than waterproof. So you can even leave, the, leave this in. So basically I could stick this battery in here, close it up, seal it with a little gasket, and then set it down inside that hatch. So I gotta see how well this fits in the hatch. This whole thing might be, I might not be able to use it at all if it doesn't fit in this hatch. This hatch comes out, there's a little bit of water in there. This thing might be too big to fit in the hatch. It, it doesn't really fit in the hatch. Yeah, it does. It fits in there. You can just put it just like that. It fits just like that in the hatch, but then you can't, well, you can still put the bag back in too. So it'll fit, it fits in the hatch. Uh, one of my things broke on my hatch, but you put it in the front hatch here. And you just pull it up and slide it out. How hard is it to get in and out? Not very easy to get in and out, is it? I really didn't think this part, I didn't think this would work, be that big of a deal. I might have to just get a different box. This, now, the problem is, is they don't make a box that fits this size very well. So I bought this tactical ammo box, but see, it's, it's a lot bigger than the box needs to be. This box can be just a little bit bigger than the battery, but I can't find one that fits this battery. I bought another one from Amazon and it said the small one had the dimensions and then the other one was just large and it didn't have any dimensions. Oh well, either way, I'll, I'll uh, I'll just put that one in there for now and if it doesn't work, if I don't like it or if, it's, if it doesn't seem like it's working well, I'll just get rid of it. 
<laughs> anyway, so you're gonna need some tools to, to do this. You're gonna need a drill. You're gonna need a battery drill. You're gonna need something to cut the plastic. Now I have this tool right here is from Milwaukee. This is from Milwaukee. This thing, this Milwaukee, little Milwaukee cutting tool is awesome. It's awesome. Tool from Milwaukee. Check it out. So this thing here, it's an M12. This thing's great. Forward and reverse. It's got a PVC cutting blade on it so I can cut this exactly where I want it. I got hole saws, drill bits. I got drill bits, hole saws. I got everything right here to, to do this. I'm, uh, well, I could always change the box if I can find a smaller box. So for now, I'm going to do it in this box just so that I can use it tomorrow because my plan is, is to go fishing tomorrow morning and I wanted to have the light. So let's get started. Let me get this let me start with laying out where the where the base is going to be for the light because that's the wire that's got to fish up to here. Oh, and the other thing is I bought some uh, LED lights. I bought some RGB LED strip lights, and I wanted to put some like under the foot wells under here. They just stick on. I wanted to stick a few here, maybe a, maybe around the front to that side there maybe some in the back back there i don't want to put a whole bunch of holes in my in my kayak but i'll put like one hole and run them around this this area here to light up this this foot well so i can see when it's dark i want to be able to light this up and see in here to see to, without having to get a flashlight out i don't really need one in the back back there but i might i got two so i might put one back there and one up here and these here these these lights are Yeah, you can cut them following the cutting lines. You can cut these things. So they're in a Ziploc. Yeah, these are what I thought they were. So I've got these lights and you can cut them. So I can, I can come out, like I can run it out and come out under the seat and go around and all the way around and back to there and then just cut whatever's left and have one wire coming up going to this, to this switch. So let's start with I'm not worried about the lights as much because I know they'll work on the 12 volt. So I want to first, I want to test this, uh, I want to test this thing and make sure that this, make sure that this comes on and works, right? Before I want to do anything, I want to make sure that this stuff is going to work. Makes sense, right? So. Positive and negative. I'm assuming this one's negative. Oh yeah, it works. All right, so this works. This just bolts together and then I gotta have a way to charge it. I've got some of these um, things. So this one's ready. I can go ahead and, and uh, drill my hole for this and decide where I'm gonna put it. So I think the best place for this would probably be like right back here. Either on this, no, not there, like right here. I don't want to get in the way of the power pole. On this side or this side, I think would be the best place for it. Because I got a cooler here with a rod hanging, rod hanging there. I don't want it in front of the cooler. It has to either be in the bottom here, stick, but that's too low. It needs to be up here. This needs to be up here on the side. It needs to be in this in this general area right here. That's where it needs to be. It needs to stick up this way. So let's get to it. Okay, so looking at this, it's about a three quarter inch hole with a little groove on the side for this piece here. So a three quarter inch hole should fit just the size of this. And then I'll have to cut out a little groove for, see this little groove, this extra little piece? I can just notch it. I can either cut it with a knife or I can cut it with my little tool and just cut a little groove out. But it's a three quarter hole. I don't want to drill too big of a hole, like a one inch hole, because then it'll be too big. So three quarter will work right here. I'm thinking like right here. So you know, like right here, right there. Right 
right there is where I'm going to drill the hole. Made a little mark. I got my marker. I left it out there in the. I've got a marker. I left it out in my thing. I'm a little nervous. I'm a little bit nervous drilling into my kayak. That's how thick the kayak is. It's pretty thick right there, isn't it? All right. So this is gonna go in here. Now here's the here's the fun part. People don't people don't know, but I know because I'm an electrician. Oh look, it almost fits in there. So I just need to the mark of where how big it needs to be. So right there and there, a little piece it needs to cut out a little piece. Let's see if my knife will cut it. I'm gonna try cutting it with my knife before I go pulling out the the wheel and chopping it. I'll change batteries. There we go. Should be wide enough to fit in here. Get in there. Somebody's just not wanting to go in there now. There we go. Nice and tight. A little bit off to the side, but that should work. All right. All right, so here's the deal. My camera up there <laughs> turned off. The battery died. So what I'm using now is my, my action camera. I'm using my DJI Osmo Action. I can tilt it back, it's on my chest mount, so that I can show you guys exactly what I'm doing here and how I fish this wire from here, all the way at the back, all the way to up there to the hole. And how I do it is with this. I've seen a lot of guys take a piece of Romex, and I'm sure that'll work. But this is what I use. This is a Greenlee 434, 25 foot fish tape. It's a flat fish tape. Greenlee doesn't sell this anymore, I don't think. Um, this is very old. I've had this for years. It's like stainless steel or something. But um, anyway, I've had this for a long, long time. So this is super easy. You just shove it in here. It'll go all the way up front. See how easy this is? You just put it in. And it'll go all the way up there. There it is, all the way to the front. How much you want to bet it's up there? Let's go look. Here it is. There's the end of it. Easy as that. So I have basically, I have this wire here. It's some 16 gauge wire or something like that. I got a couple pieces. This is just, what is this? 18 gauge, one pair, 18 gauge. It's shielded, you don't really need shielded. Um, any wire will do, it doesn't need to be shielded wire. I just happen to have shielded wire because I was using it for audio stuff. But it'll work for this. So, you just tie it to the end of this. Or just stick it in the stick it in it. It's not gonna come out. Easy as that. Watch. Just fold it over. It's got a little plastic hole in it, so you just fold it over and that's it. I go back here and pull it, pull it right in. So then I just pull the wire. And the wire will come out this hole. 
Just like that. Easy as pie. I can just leave that long. I know which one's which. And I could do the same thing for the LED lights and everything. You know what I mean? It's the same stuff. I got, I've got some four conductor for the LED lights for back here if I decide to put lights back here, which I might just to make it easier to light up the cooler, but I don't need it right now. So what I need right now is my knife. Where did I put it? Here's my knife to strip the wire. See, it's shielded, so I don't really need shielded wire, but what the heck, why not? You can see that people think, well, you got to use some big heavy gauge wire because you're, you've got all this, uh, you know, all this power. It's just a little bitty LED light, and I'll tell you something. Here's a little clue as to how how big a wire you need. How big's the wire on the on the device? All right, this wire here is. I don't see. I don't see a size on it. Oh, 18 gauge. This is 18 gauge wire. So this is 16. Oh, this is 18 and this is 18. They're both 18 gauge. So it's perfect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put heat shrink on them anyway. So what you need is if I can grab one. You need these. Do I have two? Or do I just have one? Thought I had two. Got a yellow one. I don't have another. I don't have another one. I don't want to have to pull it out. See, this this isn't going to fit over the. This heat shrink isn't big enough to fit over this, or is it? No. See, it won't fit. It'll fit over just the wire, but it won't fit over this. So I can, I can basically that water wire soldered. I don't really need it on this one where this thing is, but I've got right here. This is, a, this is great. My son-in-law gave me this for Christmas. This is a Matco Tools soldering iron that's USB powered. It's battery powered. And you just push the button and that, I use this little ring part here for uh, heating up heat shrink and stuff like that. But it's got solder, a soldering. So I'm going to strip the wire. These pliers have a crimper on them, but I don't really, that's not really a very good one. I should have brought my, my, uh, other crimpers because see, these are not, these are not, uh, strand solid wire. These are stranded. It's fine. It's fine. I'll use it for the, I'll use the crimper for the, for the black and I'll make the hot. I'm sure I'm assuming that's the hot, the gray one. Black is common. It's 20, it's 12 volts, so it doesn't really matter. But, oh, so first things first, the common one, I'll just crimp it. You put both ends into this little crimp thing, shove them in real good. Bugs out here bugging me. Squeeze them down. I ain't going nowhere. See, that's on there. It's on there good. These here, there's solder on this on this end. I'm gonna solder these together. So what you have to do when you're soldering them together is first you want to put, put a piece of heat shrink over the wire. So I don't need I don't need a heat shrink this long, I'll cut it about half the length. Slide it over the wire. Heat shrink, and now I can basically just solder these two wires together. If I can keep them together. It cools off a little fast. Only problem. It's not a very good solder job. I can't get this wire to stay there. I don't have any extra fingers. I can hold this in two fingers like this. I can hold it together. Let's try that. I need some of those little thong things. Remember those little things you can. This thing would not, I could not get that wire to 10. So what I'm doing is I just twisted the wires together and then put the 10 on them.
not even fucking do anything. There, that got him. That got him together. Gosh, finally. That's together. So now all you gotta do is just squeeze it down, slide the heat shrink up, heat shrink over it. That's not going anywhere. I mean, because I had to fold that wire over. Stupid. So now you slide the heat shrink up over the top of it. I get it to go over. Yeah. There. He shrinks over the whole thing. Perfect. Now you pop this piece off. I don't want that to touch anything else on the boat. Put this piece back on. It works, but this took a lot longer than it should have. It should have been a couple second job. Now this thing here turns red. See it turning red? End of this turns red. You just put it close and it heat shrink well heat shrink right down on the wire. Like a heat gun. You just don't want water to get to it. Especially if you're fishing in salt water like I do. When all else fails, use a lighter. There's like a uh, there's like a chemical stuff on the inside of this that will grab ow, the wire. On the edge and seal it up so no dirt and moisture and stuff can get inside there. Basically, it squeezes it, squeezes it up tight to the wire. Perfect. All right, that's in. Okay, so get out of here, bug. So that's in there. So now I just shove this down inside here. Let me make sure I didn't have a... <laughs> Watch me have had a gasket or something on there that I forgot to put on. No, there's not. Probably telling you... Where's the screws? It didn't come with any screws either. Didn't come with screws. Strange. This came with screws. That thing didn't come with any screws. It didn't come with any uh Luckily I have some screws. But it didn't come with a gasket or anything either. You'd think it would have a gasket. A little bit tight on the sides. Besides that lizard right there, look, he's he's on top of the other one, look. It's a big lizard over there. Two lizards, there's one on his back. They must be mating or something. Yeah. Mating lizards. Alright. 
Well, I'm gonna make a little gasket for it. So let's do that. Let's make a gasket for this. So I have some of this foam material stuff. It's like a rubber core foam stuff and some stainless screws that I took out of my kayak when I replaced all the screws. So these are stainless screws, they just have rusty heads. So I'm gonna get some more of these uh, stainless screws and replace them. But for now, I'm just gonna put them in because I don't have any other, I don't have any of the screws for this. I don't, it didn't have any screws with it. So right now I'm gonna cut a piece of foam I mean, it didn't come with any foam or anything. It just came with the mount. This is almost like pool noodle foam stuff. I'm sure this thing won't... No, I don't I don't hardly ever get enough water over here to even make a difference, but... Just in case... A good way to cut your hand open. You can live dangerously through me. So. I just wanted to get on most of the way around it. Yeah, that'll work. Got a little piece of foam sticking out. All right. Let me grab my my impact drill. I forgot to grab my impact. So we'll walk over and grab my impact real quick. So this is the mount I'm going to be wearing, this chest mount for kayaking when I go early. This is my motorcycle over there. Here's my impact hanging with all this various stuff. I always have a lot of collected stuff. I've got some white LED lights too. I want to see if those are uh, 12 volt also. So I don't have to use that little remote thing. I don't know how, how good those lights are. I'm right around back here, see? So, see these screws are the same screws that are there. See these screws here? I replaced all of them. And I replaced all these and all the pad eyes too. The little screws that are in there. I went to Lowe's and picked up the screws. So I'll just go and pick up some more to replace these. But for now, these will hold in there. At least it won't be up. I can go fishing with it tomorrow. These are stainless screws, so they don't... The thing about stainless screws is they don't stay... They don't... Um, they're not magnetic, so they won't... You have to push the screw in and then screw it in. Oops. See, that's fine. Little foam stuff kind of pulled up under there. That's good. I want the foam in there. Just like that. Perfect. I can always replace those with some nice stainless screws, some new stainless screws for this. There. Now we won't get any water. I'll cut, I'll cut the excess foam off. Watch. See, it doesn't quite fit exactly up under the thing, so this way, this little foam piece will fill in. Shouldn't get any water in it. Plus, that, the fitting in the hole is actually pretty daggum tight. So there you go, mounted. So now the light pole is ready. So basically when I go to launch, I just stick this in here, boom, all the way in. Yeah. Oh, lift that up. There, now it won't pull out. There's my light. 
now I've got a light. See? It's at an angle. You know, I could get something and build it up and build up a little corner and level it up. I might do that later. Get like a plastic piece or something under there and level the light so it sticks straight up, but I don't care. It works. It'll work. I kind of like it off to the side so I it'll help me to see out there in the water at night, like when it's dark. Okay, so next step is this right here. Now, this did not come with any foam or any way, anything in the box other than these little stickers to put on here for like lights and stuff, the little stickers to tell what's what. So you could technically just mount this right to the front here as long as it's pretty close, you know, as long as this is mounted good right here, it should be fine. But I'm not like that. <laughs> so I will cut out a piece of foam to put it in. Now, what's the best way to mount this? I could sit here and measure these holes out and find out, you know, exactly how far the holes are and then measure this across here. Or I could take this thing apart. It just unscrews. So you just take the black on the left. Bang, that's in there good. I'll get my pliers and pull it off. Black on the left, red on the right on this. Unscrew it, unscrew this. These things here are just little clips, little plastic clips that hold these screws. Take this off, take all the stuff off, and then it gives you a perfect template for what size holes you have to cut, or you just cut, you just mark them, mark the hole to the edge, and then you can just cut all the way through and just go a little bit past it. So you can make it perfect right there and that's what i'm gonna do i'm not gonna i'm not gonna try and figure out this exact i'm gonna measure to the center the center of that switch mark my center line and then hold this up to it right where that center switch is in the center and boom mark it out and it's ready to go so i don't need to do all that other stuff here's a little trick a little something i learned so these these two can be moved anywhere i want but you can see the red red goes to the to the brass and black goes to the negative. So it's easy to tell what ones that is. But this can be confusing because see, the hot's jumping back and forth, up and down. It's already fed. These other, these other side here is the switches. So that's switch out, switch out, switch out. This is one hot and one, one common going to everything. So in order to remember this wiring whole diagram, it's easiest just to take a picture of it. So that's a thing I've learned a, a while back, is just, just take a picture. I can I could probably be fine with it, just remember it, but if you take a picture of it, you'll remember. There you go. So now I got a picture. Now I got a perfect picture, see, of exactly the switch part and where what was jumped to what. So just in case you forget or if it if it's not marked you know you never know you might you might get in here and go to take this apart to to cut the holes and it's it's not marked it's like the the red yep see there's no there's no marking on there so you got to get these apart and there's no marking so you can't tell which one's which But now that I have a picture, uh-oh, that whole thing came out. Look at that. That's the ground, that one. The ground part came out of the switch. Oh, it did on both of the grounds. Huh. Wonder. I don't think it's supposed to. Who's calling me? Hey. Okay, so when you have everything disconnected, then these little tabs push in. You can just push them in with a screwdriver. Push one side at a time. And the whole switch will basically just slide out. See? These little, they're like little compression tabs that are holding the switch in. Yeah, that uh, the grounds came off of those. Hopefully this, hopefully they'll just pop back in and still work. So basically, once you get it started out, there's little gaskets on these, too, on the switches. You just take them out and set them like that. 
they're all exactly the same except for the last one has the those parts came out but I noticed the other ones that they started to pull out too on the other one and I pushed it over and it stayed in I just pushed it over to the side where the little I pulled it out to the side so these little tong here on the side would hold it in Okay, so you can leave all these other wires still connected to the one switch. You don't need to disconnect all the switches. Just stick the wires through there. And remember which side of the plate's which. So I shoved the switch out through the front. So this is the front side. See the little recess thing? This is the front side of your, of your, your switch, your thing. So. What I want to do is measure across here. I want to measure across here and mount this right in the dead center. Dead center of this switch. Magic marker in hand. These are the best magic markers I've ever used. These Milwaukee magic markers are incredible. Okay, so I said 16 and a half inches, so it would be eight and a quarter. Eight and a quarter inches. It was 42 millimeters. 42 inches. I lost my mind. So that's the dead center of where that switch needs to be. It doesn't have to be perfect. See? It doesn't have to be perfect. But you want it real close. It's going to have foam behind it too. See, I'm going to move my meter. I'm going to move the USB to this side. It's the same size hole, but I'm going to move it to that side. So I have the voltage meter on the left and USB on the right so I can plug into the camera. So this is the edge. Make sure it's level. Level it up and put the screws in. So now for the fun part. Now to drill a big huge hole in the back of here so just check the back side make sure you don't have anything that could possibly mess up on the back side and the inside of your kayak just reach in here and feel the back make sure it's smooth and make sure there's nothing in the way so uh, hole saw works but i probably will just use a paddle bit i got a seven eighths paddle bit paddle bits will probably work just as good if not better I'll probably use a smaller one yeah I got that's another 7 8 here's a here's a, here's, a, here's one paddle bit should work pretty good in a in the kayak so I'm gonna drill it like right there Drilling on my on my there's one hole. See, I'm going. What I'm doing is going. See how the hole isn't to the very edge because I don't really need that corner cut. I can just go right across the top, right across there to the to the left. Much softer down there. The bottom was softer. It's thinner right there than up at the top. Top's thicker. Move this stuff out of my wire. See, you don't want to go with too big of a hole because you'll you could mess up your your kayak man you don't want to mess up your kayak now my pvc cutting tool perfect especially for the big part
it doesn't get much easier than that. There's plenty of people out there on YouTube right now watching this. Getting mad that I did this so fast and easy. <laughs> I said plenty of people. Look at the dust. Dust on the camera. Bet you there's plenty of people out here on YouTube land. Got really pissed off that I cut that out so fast and easy and smooth. Get you this tool. Get you this tool. You don't have to worry about it. You got that? I said you got that? Folks, this tool here is the tool to do it. See how easy that was? Awesome. Awesome. All right. Now that I'm, now that I use this thing, so easy. Wasn't that awesome? <laughs> so now I'm going to make sure that this is fits. Yep. Pretty daggum perfect. Pretty perfect. I got blue stuff all over me. So now I want to cut a piece of foam just like I did before, but I want it this size here. So I'm going to cut my, use my knife. I got this foam here. I could be wrong. I, I might not need this on here at all. It might be just fine without this foam. But... Better be safe than sorry, right? I'll cut into my thumb. It'd be a whole different video if I cut my thumb off. No. <laughs> now I've watched a lot of YouTube videos on DIY stuff. And I've seen a lot of people do a lot of DIY stuff. One of my favorites is Marty over in over in Tampa. Marty Zoffinger. I like him. He's a construction-based type of guy. I'm an electrician, so you'd think I would have done better with the uh, think I would have done a whole lot better with that solder. <laughs> I don't do a whole lot of soldering, <laughs> but I do, like I soldered my guitar and stuff like this, but it was small stranded wire. It was made to be soldered. That was like not the same type of stuff. All right. So I didn't want it that thick. It doesn't need to be as thick as this whole thing. This is still a little bit thick. That's all right, it'll flatten out. So basically, See. Basically, it'll it flattens and squeezes to the side to the shape of the thing, so That's my template. I need something to cut this on. How about this lead acid battery box? We'll do this. Rear 360 light. So I wrote on that. I wrote on this so that I, if after it's on there, I can tell what it is. And when that dries, it, it'll be there for years. <laughs> it's amazing. These uh, 
these are amazing things, these uh, markers. The funny thing is, is it took me longer to mount the light back there than it did to... It took me longer to wire that light than it did to, to drill this hole and cut it out. Right? Isn't that silly? There's my strippers. Y'all ever seen my strippers? There's my strippers, pair of pliers. That's how you can tell who an electrician is. For now, today, I'm just going to do, because it's getting so late, it's 5.30, I want to eat. So I'm just going to do just this light here. And then add the LED lights later. I can always unscrew this and add the LED lights later. I can probably... Yeah, I can reach through and plug them in right there. I wouldn't even need to take this off again. Once it has power. Once it has power, I don't need to take it off. There you go. Okay. Now, you put the stuff back in. And you screw it to the deck. That's it. So this this uh, USB is now going to go on the on the right hand side. Instead of on the left, I want it on the right. I don't want it on the left. I don't need this foam in the way that. Also, don't want it twisting. I get it pretty snug. There you go. That's in there good. Yeah, see the USB has little things that plug into the USB ports and kind of hold them, keep them from getting corroded. They'll get corroded anyway. They're on a boat. Everything on a boat gets corroded. All right. This is my voltage meter. Let's all wash off. to beat it with a screwdriver or anything just like that's good then my switches right back in left to right or right to left actually goes like this then it yeah one like that that one and then this one yeah and then the one without the grounds on the bottom there we go and then this one all right yeah. Yeah. So I didn't need a crimp on the ground. So basically this hot goes here. So say I would say I want that switch there to be my my big light. Then I'll make this one here, this red. So I say I want that one there to be the light in the back on the back left. Then I put All right. So <laughs> So now my GoPro, my uh my not GoPro, my DJI Osmo Action, <laughs> the camera died. So 
let's look at, so I got this ready to be mounted. I got my wire on here. There's a uh, part that I picked up based on what, there's a couple things I picked up. These things here are, um, they're like little connectors for waterproofing your box. So I'm gonna put the battery in there. I have to waterproof it. So it waterproofs the, the cables coming through the box. And then this is another cable that he suggested I get. It's basically these things can just plug together like this and they make like a waterproof connection. So you can wire this and have this hanging out of the box and then this will wire to it. So when you take the box out, you've got this hanging out. So you can always have this end on another end, you know, just cut. So you can cut this, basically you should have two of these, but I'm just gonna use one of them right here and make a join on it and then just plug it in. So you cut this, these in the middle. So you take this, you wanna hook your ground. So now this is the part where you would want um, a quick connect or something so that you can put these three with the ground together as you shove them through. So that way you can extend these wires however long. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put these together and use a, use a crimp and extend the hots and these out and make it just a little bit longer, but I'm gonna crimp them. So your ground from the ground from the light, so this, this ground goes here. You just have the one ground and then there's your, you got a hot there and a hot there. So two hots and a ground. They have these little rubber connectors over them. You don't really need them, but they have them. So everything's plugged back in. So now you have the two hots and you'll have a, a, another hot going to this. This is almost long enough, but I want a little bit of extra wire in there. I don't want this right at the end of the wire. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go grab a piece of wire. So basically I went out to the shed and I found this piece of lamp cord that whoever bought my, whoever had my house before me ran this cord all the way around the eave for the lights. <laughs> and I found a piece. I don't need a long piece. I just need it long enough to be able to pull that box out, right? So I don't want it super long. Just long enough to pull the box out. And I don't need the quick connector on here. I just want the quick connector in the, in the box, really. Or just outside the box. I want the quick connector. So I want to extend this and have a quick connector and then have a quick con another piece coming out of the box with another quick connector on it. And then this can be in the box with the power going to it. You know, you know what I mean? I'm gonna cut this. You'll see. If I have to find some more crimps, I will. If I don't have enough crimps, I'll just get more. <laughs> I probably have some in, in my drawer in the room. I know I got two yellow ones here. I got two yellow ones, which is what you need. These yellow ones are the big ones for um, number 10 wire, and number 14, like 12, 10. So these will, these will be fine for this. So, this. so the striped wire is the ground wire. The one with the grooves in it is the identified conductor. I know it's the opposite of what you do for uh, most uh, marine stuff, but in electrical, the neutral or ground is the identified conductor. That's what the, the um, National Electrical Code Book says. So when you see a, a striped wire, it's not the positive. If you see one with little grooves on it, it's not the hot, it's the, it's the neutral. In regular residential, or regular electrical field, that's what's what. So these three grounds can go together. And hopefully I'll never have to get this back apart. If I do, I'd probably just do it inside the can. I'd make another hole in the box and do it inside the box. Okay, so those are in there good. That's not going anywhere. And then the hots go together like this.
stretch. Well, I can. This is stretchy enough. I can stretch it around. So this just has to be long enough to get to here to unplug, right? It doesn't have to be real long. It just has to be long enough to get to there to unplug. Unplug from that thing. So this is going to be the one coming out of the out of the boot. I'll put wire nuts on it if I don't have more crimps. I think I've got some more crimps at, at, uh, inside. Be nice to have the crimps on it already. So, red's the part of the white's the negative. Now I'm going to have to go dig up some crimps. The moral of the story here is buy enough crimps so that you don't, the, the butt splices, so that you don't have to use wire nuts. I don't have enough, but I can reach this through the hatch and just change them out later. So that's, I just thought I had, I thought I had a whole bunch of them, but I've got a bunch of different types of connectors, these type, but I didn't have a bunch, I didn't have that, only a few of the butt splices. So I'm going to have to use wire nuts for now. All right. So then you just run your wire through like this. Oh, <laughs> it'd help if I put it the right way. So it goes like that. It's actually perfect. Actually, I got to trim just a little bit with my knife because the, the, the lock nuts on these lights. Have your knife handy. Have your knife ready. But with the piece right here. Let me see my tool. That works even better than the knife. Faster and better. It's on the sides too. Yeah. Oh, get over here, kayak. Kayak slide. Yeah, if you gotta cut a little bit out to get these little, see the lock nuts stick out a little bit on the sides? Just cut a little bit, there you go. That's in there like a glove. See, that fits perfect. So, that's where it's supposed to be. The screws, Ugh, see, it just moves back over. <laughs> there. That's where it's supposed to be. I don't want to have to go get some bolts, stainless bolts and nuts and put behind this. I will if I have to. I'm not afraid to do it. It, is, it just needs some caulk. It just doesn't, this plastic's soft and it's not flat. It really should either have either a metal flat plate behind it or You just gotta caulk it. All right. So that's basically what it looks like. There it is right there. Mounted in there, that looks pretty good, doesn't it? I think it looks good. 
I need to caulk around the sides, but I don't, I don't like that, but that'll work in the kayak, that's perfect. The wire's right here. This is the wire to, the, to this, and it's wired to the light already. So now all I need to do is get this battery inside here with a cord coming out, right? I need another one of these cords coming out because I'm going to crimp it with this on the end so I can just plug it into here. So I can unplug this without opening the case and take the battery out, right? So we get another piece of cord. Very sharp knife that I'm handling like it's nothing. So how you do this is you got this little, you don't have to do anything. I'm going to figure out a way to mount this thing. Basically, whatever this one fits through. That's it. Three eighths. The three eighths hole. So I need a three eighths hole in this. Where's my drill? Back here. I need a three eighths hole in this box. And honestly, it can be anywhere in it because it's not going to be sitting on the bottom. This as long as it's not right close to the edge or close to the bottom. You can put it almost anywhere. So I could even put it in the top here, have the hole there, but I'd rather have it like over here close to the clamp, like somewhere like right in here, which is where I'm going to put it. You don't want it on the bottom so that if it does get that much water, it doesn't get up to that hole. Nah, it's bigger than 3 8 That's a 3 8 we'll go with a half inch. Kind of tore the plastic. Ah, for crying out loud. So, gonna give you guys a quick test. Turn the switch on, light comes on. Switch off, light goes off. Here, I'll show you close up what it looks like going on and off. All right, so here's what it looks like. You can see the voltage right there. It tells me it's 12.9 volts. If I flip this switch, it turns on the light back there. See the lights on back there? Hold on, let me get it in. See the light on? Flip the switch, light off, switch, light on. But that's it. So it works. What I would do is I would take the battery out uh, and I've, I've got to caulk this because it's I can see it's got like a dimple right here. It's not on that side, but on this side it's going in and it's not hitting anything. So. I might shave it a little bit more and see if I can get that dimple out of there. If not, I'm going to just put some caulk or something behind it or get a piece of metal and put it behind there to push it, flatten it. Because it's, it's like dimpling in right here. But that might have always been like that. I don't know. It's soft. This plastic's real soft right here. So anyway. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down. I hope I helped. <laughs> it's, it's a, it takes hours. It's a lot of work, but I hope this helped. If it didn't shout, if you got a better idea or you know of a better box that will fit this size battery, comment below, let me know so that I can use something different because I don't really like the way this is, but it works. So I'm not going to complain. Anyway, I got to go. I've got stuff I got to do. I got to clean up all this mess and I'll talk to you later.